Hello and welcome to another edition of Lord Fenton Gaming's Don't Panic Guides. I'm your host Lord Fenton. The game we're going to be talking about today is Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. This guide will also work for the normal edition. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Dungeon Dragon content like this. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you be up to date on all my videos. Now this game, Planescape Torment, was originally released in December 12, 1999. Then it was re-released as the Enhanced Edition of April 11th of 2017 and then this year for the consoles October 15th 2019. Yes folks we're getting close to the 20th anniversary of Planescape Torment. Now this guide here will cover everything from stats, the death system, the story, and what's the best items you want to look for to heal and uh, more. So what we're going to do right now is actually uh, get to the uh, character uh, creation screen. So let's do that now, everybody. Now, for character creation, this is totally different than my Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dell don't play guides. There's usually a whole bunch of classes. Guess what? You start out as a fighter. You're thinking, wait a second, I'm playing one class? No, there's a total of three classes, the other two you need to find. So when you begin a new life as the nameless one, who's uh, immortal, you get these stats. Besides your character points, armor class, and hit points you start with. So let's go over each of them right now. So let me tell everybody on which of these uh, stats are for each of them. Now, the first one is strength, is ability to carry more items. Your melee damage will be much more uh, damaging. Now, strength, when you keep on pumping it up, you'll start out as... I believe 18, 1, and then 18, I think 30, 60, 90, and then 0. 0 means 100. So that's basically it for strength. Now this game, Wisdom recalls memories. That means higher Wisdom, more likely you're going to lose less. Low Wisdom, you're going to lose a lot more. Yes, I'll explain more on that in the death system. Also, this gives you bonus experience points, which is a really good stat to have. The next stat on the list is Constitution. This will give you more hit points upon leveling and also gives you much more a better health regeneration rate. So if you're more of a frontline fighter you want your name is one to be that, definitely Constitution is a consideration. Now next up on the list is Charisma. Now Charisma will uh, actually have conversations favor in your way more often. Yes, if you're in a story driven game like this, Charisma is really important. Now next up on the list is Dexterity. Now Dexterity will lower your armor class. Lower your armor class, more likely folks will be harder to hit you. And second of all, it helps your uh, thieving skills in this game. So remember that with uh, high Dexterity scores. Now next up is Intelligence. Helps you regain your memories faster, give you more dialogue options. And finally, best part is uh, aging your uh, mage skills. In other words, more Intelligence, more you can hold uh, scrolls to memorize which is really uh, good at this point so that's it basically for the basic stats in the game so let's talk about the other parts now next part is your character points when you begin your character you have 21 character points to distribute you do gain a character point per level also during certain things in the game will actually give you a certain stat increase so remember that folks now next up is your armor class now based on your dexterity higher dexterity lower your armor class you will have starting out with so just remember that also the nameless one don't equip heavy armor and stay equipped certain items to lower his uh, armor class too. Last but not least is hit points. That means uh, more hit points you have, a character lives longer, character gets a zero hit points, that character will uh, die, especially if you nameless one, nameless one dies. He goes back to the morgue folks. You're going to be seeing that in a few moments. So let's begin on the tips I'm going to give everybody on character creation. I am going to give everybody the uh, some advice on the nameless one on how you should build them. Focus on wisdom and charisma. Those are your most two important stats in the entire game. Wisdom gives you more experience points. Charisma gives you more options for your dialogue to go your way. Also, you want to get a little bit of intelligence this way you have more options. And then depending on what class, you can go for strength for fighters, intelligence for mages, and dexterity for rogues. So that is it for my uh, Nameless One advice. Now the next section of this uh, video will uh, cover the story and why it's so unique and pretty uh, cool. So let's uh, get to the uh, story portion of this uh, video. 
Now, let's talk about the story. You're waking up in the morgue right now wondering, okay, I'm already dead. What's going on? Well, you're undead, and you just lost your memory. That's what the object of this game is trying to get your memory back. This game is so rich in story and everything else. It's very great and unique. I seriously love it. So whatever choices you make in the game will actually help you or hinder you at times. And sometimes if you do something a certain way, you actually do get rewarded very well. Sometimes in form of a certain ability that gets increased. For instance, you get plus one strength or plus one intelligence even. Also, the companions in the game are really well written and uh, rich. And some of them when you get in the party are awesome. Especially when you talk to them, you learn more about their history and uh, actually uh, more. So yeah, every action you do in this game is very important. This includes your alignment action. So it depends on how much your character's alignment is. So if you want to act more uh, chaotic, then do more chaotic things. If you want to act more obeying the law, then do that. There's also good and evil too. So if you're more evil by doing nefarious acts, well, you become more evil. Now, if you're more good, then you do good acts. Now, certain companions will uh, react to your alignment. So you need to be careful on uh, this. So I'm just going through the dialogue right now with the morgue and more. Yeah, so this is like the first area of the game is the uh, morgue. This is more like a tutorial area, so this is a great way to learn the game real quick before being uh, rushed out there in the uh, City of Doors, which is called Sigil. Yes, folks. You're in Planescape Torment. You're in the infamous Sigil City, where if you go through one door, you might go to, into another world, which is pretty uh, great in this uh, game. So as we're uh, talking to uh, Morty, who's going to be our uh, companion in a few moments... Let me uh, review one more uh, time. Just remember, this is a very heavy story-driven game. Just enjoy yourself. Just soak in the dialogue, which is really uh, great, and make good choices. Also, very important, one last thing. Save often and save a lot. Just trust me. You might run into a choice you didn't want to do. You can go back and make a different choice. This next section I will be going over will be the class system, alignment, Tycho and uh, more. So we're going to go in the uh, character uh, screen right now and check out all the uh, stats. There's your uh, abilities right there, strength, intelligence, wisdom, etc. Armor class, alignment, and more. Let's talk about the class system first. You start out as a level 3 fighter and then eventually you'll find mage trainer and rogue, tra um, rogue trainers or thief trainers. Now here's the thing about this right here. For instance, if you go from a fighter to mage, your fighter will be hauled out. You start as a mage until you're a level 4 mage. So remember that if you switch back to a fire, it be hauled out until the fire is level 5. So be careful what you uh, choose, Tycho, which means uh, to hit. So for instance, say a foe has an armor class of 1, your Tycho is 17, you need to roll 16 or better to hit the foe. Same thing if you have armor class of 1 and a foe has to roll a 16 or better to hit you. So just remember that. There's your saving throws too which is very important. That's what nameless ones get. And now let's talk about the alignment real quick. In this game it's very story driven. Whatever actions you do in this game will affect your alignment. So for example, if you follow the law more and then your alignment changes. Now your alignment is in between charisma and uh, AC right there. So just be careful with your alignment. I am serious. So if you want to play a lawful uh, good person then just remember to obey the laws and also uh, be a good guy. If you're more chaotic, be a bully, yeah, you're going towards that chaotic evil path. Now, if you want to stay on a neutral path, then do some of this, do some of that. Just not enough to change your alignment. Now, in this game, certain characters will actually, in your party, will react to your alignment. And I'll say this definitely. One of the characters will react to a certain alignment. I'm going to let everybody discover this. And that's it for alignment. So there's also your weapon proficiencies. The nameless one will have a limited selection of weapons to use. You're wondering, okay, why not conventional uh, great swords or two-handed weapons or uh, more? Well, this game is different, and some of the weapons that the Nameless One has is really uh, great. So after this, last is your ability bonuses from your stats, and that's it right there. So now in the next section, I'm going to cover uh, death and ways to get the uh, game over screen. In this next section, what I'm going to be talking about is uh, death and game over. You could die as many times as you want and still uh, benefit from continuing the story. However, every time you die, you lose a little bit of yourself. Die too many times, 
Yeah, it's game over. Also, there's ways I'll permanently end your game. First of all, if you are ticking off the lady of pain who runs the city of Sigil, she eventually will kill you. If you get turned to stone, that is it. Now, killing story characters at the wrong time or ahead of time, that's game over. There's also factors to, that will get you the game over screen. I'll let everybody discover this. So just be careful on dying. You could die many times as you want, but seriously, you need to be careful on this. So just remember to save often. You may never know because death could be on your way and it's game over. In this next section, you will get people in the game that you can recruit to your uh, party. For instance, we got the talking skull right here. Now, every companion is very different in the game. You definitely want to speak to all the companions in the game because that is seriously important. I am very serious. There are some companions you can get later on. They'll fit the role of fighter, thief. There's even some that will actually multi-class, which is actually uh, pretty good. There's also a cleric companion. Yes, one of the classes you cannot uh, become in this game, but still, do not panic about lack of cleric right now. I'll explain more of that later on about healing. Now, in the next section of the game is your uh, item screen right here. Where your paper doll is at, there's what you equip, what you cannot remove, such as this eye right here. You need to exchange it. Underneath that is the name of your character you're looking at currently. Left hand side your AC, which is armor class, is at 10 right now. Lower the better. Your hit points are right there at top. Is current. Bottom is your max. To right of the name is your uh, what you can hold and your weight. Above that is how many weapons you can hold, which is 4 for the fighter. Above that is 5 for the ammo slot. And then above that even is your uh, items you can hold. Right hand side is what's on the ground. And then there's your money. Also look for plus 1 weapons or better. I will be going over some of the parts of the uh, UI in the game. This is the map right here, first of all. This is real easy. There's some uh, pinpoints right there. So if you need to know where you're at, just look at the map. Yes, these type of games, you always want to look at the map in case you uh, do get lost. Also, there's a world map button there, too. Plus, you can add your own personal notes. I am not sure if the console version has the notes. If they do, abuse it. So let's get to the next section. Now, the next section is your uh, spells. There's mage and cleric spells. So if your nameless one is uh, mage, then you'll have not have this hollowed out at all. Plus, you could have what you could memorize and what you could actually uh, use. So let's talk about the next section of the video. This is your uh, journal right here. You get to track your quests down, including main and side quests you get all over the game, personal notes and journals, pieces, which includes much you fought, NPCs you meet, and PCs that join your party. So, my final tip about the journal, the map, spell system, and more. Use them. I mean, they are there for you to help you out. They're great tools. So now, next part of the video I will uh, speak about is uh, isometric. What the world uh, looks like right here. Now, the next section of the video is exploration. Now, very first tip is the tab button on the PC and the highlight button on the consoles. Also, you can move faster, and uh, when you click on a certain object, you can loot them up, see if there's anything there. See, I'm looting everything up right now. There's a free scalpel right there, which means I have a nice weapon. And any time when you get this right here, that means there's dialogue that will automatically uh, trigger in the game. So, just be uh, careful on this. Also, like I said, for your choices, and just look around your environment. Right now, enemies are not that hostile, but later on they will be. So, we're going to talk about bandages next and healing items. Now, next up, I'm going to talk about healing items in the game and resting. You're wondering, okay, why healing items? I get a cleric later on. Yeah, you get it. You don't get her now, but here's the deal. Bandages and healing items are a lifesaver in this game. It will save lives at the very beginning. Number one, you're not that strong. Number two, healing items are uh, great. Instead of just constantly resting, no, use those to heal and then explore the uh, city of sigil and its underground areas and even the plains more. As for resting, you can rest in dungeons, but you might risk in the combat. So, safest way to rest is either find an inn or somebody else offering you uh, rest. So that's it for uh, resting and healing items in the game. Now, next up on the uh, list is combat. Now, combat is just like any other Infinity Edging games I've been doing Don't Panic guides on. The best way to actually uh, save your skin is actually hitting the pause button. Yeah, that space bar on the PC it might be different on the consoles. Use this so this way you could uh, have your uh, characters to pick and choose which you want to fight. Right now these are docile enemies. 
Still, abuse is feature because later on you might have to face a group of enemies that are much, much harder and hostile. So this way when you hit the pause screen, select every character individually and plan your attacks accordingly. So for instance, if you have a mage in your party, a fighter, and a thief, you can have your uh, thief right now to uh, wait until your fighter goes in and then they attack and then your mage starts uh, nuking from a safe distance or uh, debuffing foes so your fighter could uh, chew them up. So in all, abuse the pause system is a great option in this game. Also know what to fight and know when to retreat. So that's it for combat. Here are some uh, final tips for me to survive playing Scape Torment, Enhanced Edition or Normal Edition. Number one, search everywhere if there are traps, watch out for those. Number two, look for uh, weapons that are uh, better than mundane. Aim for plus three because later on you'll be facing outsiders. Abuse the items that you uh, get which includes bandages and more. Uh, do not be afraid to uh, join groups because you get uh, discounts from them when you do their uh, quests and uh, more. Also talk to your companions and everybody because talking will help too because you may never know when you talk to someone you get some nice unlocks. Uh, plan your names when accordingly. Be careful with them. Also very important save often save early. Just trust me. Last tip, do many uh, quests as you want to in the game. Do many side quests because you may never know that extra experience point does uh, help. Well, that is it for my Don't Panic Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition New Player Guide. This is Lord Fent signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day or night.